my journaling practice is quite elaborate. So I journal every morning and I spend quite a bit of time in the morning because I just find it the most creative time where my brain is very awake and ready and also quite connected to my subconscious. So I'm still being able to connect to some insights that I've had at night, things that come to me in my dreams, for example. Welcome to the Become a Writer Today podcast with Brian Collins. Here you'll find practical advice and interviews for all kinds of writers. What's your favorite form of writing practice? Hi there, my name is Brian Collins and welcome to the Become a Writer Today podcast. My favorite form of writing practice is journal writing. And it's something I've talked before about on the podcast. And I've also written a series of articles about journal writing on Become a Writer Today and for better humans on Medium. So basically each morning I like to write a 150 to 300 word journal entry and I write the entry about anything from how things are going with a creative project in my business, in my personal life, or even how I'm preparing for the Dublin City Marathon. I don't spend too long on these journal entries, but I find it helps me warm up for the day's writing because the journal entry is for me and me alone. So I don't have to worry if the entry doesn't make sense or if it's gibberish or even if it's a little bit angry or dark. It's just simply an opportunity to practice writing. And you know what? It's cheaper than therapy. And I've actually been keeping journals for nearly 15 years now. I have a box full of them in my wardrobe somewhere in the house. And I have a password protected file on my computer, which is several hundred thousand words long and full of journal entries. And these days I'm using the app Day One for journaling. So it's definitely a form of writing practice that I've stuck with. It's also a form of writing practice that I recommend to new writers who are struggling to, you know, cultivate that consistent habit of turning up, of getting the words out of your head and onto the blank page. And you know what? Journaling is fun. You can use journaling to explore ideas for your books, for your stories, or even for your business, or even just to think through problems you're having at work. One topic I recently wrote a couple of journal entries about was about the launch of my course, Conquer Writer's Block. I spent several months creating the course and I updated all of the lesson materials inside. And I spent a bit of time ensuring the launch materials were set up for new students. And The launch went relatively well, but I didn't quite hit my target for the launch in question. That said, I got some good feedback from students inside of the course and I was pretty happy with how the materials went. So when I was writing a journal entry about this particular launch, I documented a few key lessons about things I got wrong and a few key lessons about things I got right. So one example of things I got wrong was not scheduling all of the launch emails in advance. Instead, I just logged into my email software, which is ConvertKit, and scheduled them on a day-by-day basis, which actually caused me a bit of frustration because the launch took longer than it should have and bled into the weekend. One thing I got right was working with a video editor because he fixed errors in the course videos that would have taken me a little bit longer to edit. And that actually freed me up to create a couple of bonuses for the course. So I'm going to use the lessons from that particular launch to improve next time around and perhaps to create something new or to create something better. And I typically like to do a personal debrief like that after a launch or at the end of a creative project. My journaling practice has changed over the years. When I started, I think I just used to write entries about what I did yesterday or last week. But these days I focus on particular themes like the example I just gave you there. One expert in journaling is Mikhail Korzonik. He's the co-founder of Journal Smarter and currently lives in the UK with his, his partner. So at Journal Smarter, he coaches clients, students, and even writers how to use journaling for everything from cultivating habits to focusing on their goals to exploring ideas for creative work. When I interviewed Mikhail, we covered a lot of different topics including how writers and creatives can use journaling to find more or even better ideas, how to cultivate a journaling habit, even if you don't have one, the tools he uses for journaling and why he says analog tools are sometimes best, and how journaling encourages creative and even clear thinking. But I started by asking Mikhail what he wants to achieve with his company, 
Journal Smarter and the journaling system that he's come up with? Sure. So Journal Smarter is a blog about journaling and where we dive deep into different practices, methodologies and principles of how you can make journaling very effective and a very powerful tool for personal development for any goal that you really want to achieve. And uh, what type of people do you find can benefit from journaling? Uh, well, in my personal opinion, it can be literally for every single person because simply speaking, journaling is just bringing attention and expanding your awareness. So anyone can benefit from a big dose of clarity that you can get from journaling, I think. You know, practices like setting goals, reflecting on your life. Uh, are you a writer who wants to, I don't know, expand your writing, writing practice or an entrepreneur who wants to 10x their business or whatever else is you're trying to do in your life, uh, journaling can help with that. Okay, well, let's talk about both of those people then. So, so firstly, writers, uh, you touched there on writing practice. So how, how could a writer use journaling as a form of writing practice? Well, so being a writer myself, I use it for in numerous different ways. So for example, idea generation. So simple practices like just dumping your ideas and brainstorming on paper or arranging structures of your articles. I do lots of different kind of mind maps that then I'm trying to transform into an actual outline of the story, which needs to be chronological. And, you know, it's not just a random um, amalgamation of pieces put together. So it helps me to make sense of, of the flow. It helps me to find a story. I used it for both nonfiction and fiction writing. Yeah, it can be as simple as reflecting on what happens in your life and recording observations and insights that you have so then you can come back to them and see that, wow, this idea was amazing or this particular conversation that I've had two years ago actually now fits so well with a story I'm trying to write. So it's becoming a way of processing life and bringing attention to things that are important so you can remember them better and make use of them. And an entrepreneur or a small business owner who's not necessarily a writer, how might he or she journal? So the process or the methodology is pretty much the same. You know, if you're trying to figure out objectives for your business, you can use a journal to brainstorm them and get some clarity on what works and what doesn't. You know, if you're doing some very technical things like, I don't know, designing your funnel or trying to create a sales page for your new product, you can also do that in your journal. You can play around. It's very easy to to move things around, to cross things over, redesign, and just keep your brain focused on whatever is important. You can ask yourself questions, which is a practice that I'm using pretty much every day. So before falling asleep, you can just ask something that's important and then your subconscious will do the work for you. So when you wake up in the morning, all you need to do is uh, answer. And just like that, actually, there was quite a few few business-related ideas that came to me just like that because I've asked myself a question in the journal. I like that. I like that. So, So do you write entries in the evening and the morning? Yeah. At the moment, my journaling practice is quite elaborate. So I journal every morning and I spend quite a bit of time in the morning because I just find it the most creative time where my brain is very awake and ready and also quite connected to my subconscious. So I'm still being able to connect to some insights that I've had at night, things that come to me in my dreams, for example. But then sometimes I journal throughout my day. I use my journal to keep myself on track with work. So I use it as a simple to-do list and, you know, and structure of my day. So journal is with me pretty much throughout the whole day. And then in the evening, I reflect on my day. So I write key insights, key thoughts, key observations. And I do some habit tracking. So whenever I try to build habits, I just record how I'm doing with this process to bring my attention yet again that, oh, if I fail, I want to do this tomorrow because it's important to me. So uh, I use the app day one for journaling. And in the past, I've used a password protected file on my computer. And before that, I've used a paper notebooks. Sometimes I still use paper notebooks. What do you use or what do you recommend? I'm using a paper journal. 
simple white blank pages with no grids, no bullets, no nothing, just because I love the freedom of it. And while I see the benefit of apps and especially, you know, being searchable and you can find information much easier, for me personally, I am much bigger fan of analog journals, just simple paper. And there is a few reasons for that. First is because I work a lot with computers. So this basically means it's, you know, one hour less in front of the screen, which I see as a big benefit. The second one is what I mentioned already, which is it's just much more agile. I'm not confined to any particular format of an app that kind of forces me to do things in a certain way. And since I experiment with my journal in practice all the time, it changes constantly. Therefore, I just like to make easy changes to the layouts and to components as I go. And also, I find it very helpful that I cannot edit. I mean, of course, I can cross things out and, you know, just uh, rip a page of my journal. But generally speaking, when it's something it's written, it's there forever to stay, which is a very good thing, I find, because it just keeps me accountable to my own words. So based on your website, Journal Smarter, and what you've described, your practice sounds quite visual. In other words, it sounds like there's more than just words in your journals. So could you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, my practice is using lots of different components. I'm quite a, I can't really draw well, but I'm always very attracted to different kinds of flow charts, graphs, and basically visual representation of data. And I think my mind works a bit in that way. So my journal is a combination of symbols that represents different things and cue different ideas. Whenever I brainstorm something, it's usually just a dump of words in different places that I then connect with symbols. I doodle quite a lot and I find it helps me unlock whenever I get stuck and I don't know what to write anymore. Sometimes I just draw something that's not particularly anything, just a blob of of ink on the page, you know, but it somehow unlocks unlocks my brain. For example, my partner writes much more, it's basically much more written. It's very heavy on the text and it's, it's quite, you know, it's almost diary-like entries while she's the illustrator between the two of us and she can do amazing, amazing illustrations and sometimes she includes them in her journal, but her journaling practice is much more much more heavy on text rather than other components. So I think this is just how I approach it, but but I think both have merit, whatever works best. What do you do with your old entries or journals? Do, do you ever go back and look at them or do you just put them aside? And... I do. So because I travel quite a bit, I have a very minimalist backpack and I love having very little things with me, which is a bit of a tricky thing with journals because I go through quite a few of them every year. But Basically, every single journal that is finished, I scan it. So then I have a copy every time with me. And I find that I usually go back to old journals quite regularly. I don't really have a practice of going back, you know, every month or every year. But I would say that there's very often something that comes up in my head that I know I have made a record in a specific journal. And then I just go to that journal and I more or less can find where it is in the journal itself. And then I just just find the entry. Just the other day, I was looking for for some insights from a book. And I know I read this book a while ago. I know I I knew I read, I wrote about it in my journal as I was reflecting about it. So I just went back to my old journal. I had the scan, so it was very easy. And yeah, I found the, the insight I was looking for. So do you store the physical journals somewhere? Yeah, I store them in just in my parents' house. That's the kind of the the permanent place where I can keep my old old kind of memories. So yeah, I I, I like that. You know, when when I'm there, when I visit them, sometimes I I like to just go through my old journals and kind of look at them more as a you know as a looking at myself a few years back and just remember who I was at specific points of time when I was writing things down. But I found, interestingly, that the most important insights, while I write them down, I think the act of writing them down somehow triggers the brain that this is important, you should remember that. So I don't really need to go back to the journal itself because it stays in my memory. And sometimes, of course, when it's something very technical, you know, like a name or something more detailed, I might forget and I need to go back to find this this particular information. But most of the time when it comes to 
big insights that really had triggered some powerful decisions in my life or observations that really changed something, you know, shift my paradigms that stays with me after I have written it. So the act of writing actually brings it to the surface and suddenly becomes something becomes clear that might have not been clear before. And Mikhail, you put together a minimalist journaling system for people who, correct me if I'm wrong, haven't journaled much before. Could, could you describe how it works? Yeah, so this is a very visual method of representing your journey of your life. And the kind of whole idea behind it is it takes 30 seconds every day or less. So it's super simple just to remove all the barriers, you know, to, for you to actually get started. Um, and it gives you a continuous readout of where you are at in life. And, you know, the system itself can be used for different purposes. So one kind of the most common one is to build habits. It can be used as a habit tracker, but it's very simple. It's playful. It's fun. And you can customize it as you go. And you can track just with a simple square. You can track very elaborate routines and it still takes a few seconds to track everything. So you don't need to actually go through a list of 40 boxes and tick them all, but you can do that uh, using one simple square. But also you can track more intangible things that happen in your life. For example, key events, how you feel, your productivity levels, your relationships, your sex life, maybe your um, insights that you have. So it can be also used for this less tangible way. But the main point of it is that every day I look at my squares and it gives me a very, very clear overview of how my life is going. I see a month or two months or how many you know days I want to see at once. And within 10 seconds, I decipher those little hieroglyphic symbols I'm using to, to represent certain things in my life that are important to me. And... Yeah, and I get exactly where I, am I at, what's happening, and I can see patterns that cause certain things. For example, recently I I burnt myself out a little bit, and I could see exactly, I could see all the signs before the burnout happened, leading to it, and in a way I was completely aware that it's coming because I've seen this pattern many many times before, and then it happened, and I could see exactly how it's going, and I knew that in a few days if I'm gonna start doing certain things that usually get me out of the, the kind of burnout mode, it's probably going to go back. I'm going to go back to, to normal. And that's exactly what happened. So spotting old patterns allowed me to, let's say, fix something that was wrong or not working. That sounds quite qualitative. So w what kind of habits or routines would you recommend people start tracking? Or, or I suppose, what kind of habits or routines do you find your, your clients or, or customers like to track? So this is a very, very good question. And it's also the place where you can completely get lost because the, what I see, the regular tendency is we want to do too many things at once. And this is where usually it becomes overwhelming and then we quit very quickly. So for somebody who would just be to start this, I just really highly recommend to start with one, just one habit to track because that ensures that your entire attention is on this one specific habit. And this, you know, we usually start with, with asking a question, what is the change you would like to see in the next 90 days in your life? And then that becomes a goal and then try to break it down into, into a tiny habit that you can do every day, even on your most miserable day when you don't feel like doing anything, but you still commit to do this one tiny thing that is contributing to this goal that you want to see happen in your life. So in this way, you're building consistency and you just keep tracking it in your square every day, every day, every day. I was going to ask, could you give an example of something that's broken down like that? Uh, for example, let's say that you want to be fit, you know, let's, let's say that you want to have a, you know, more healthier body. You feel like, oh, maybe I'm not exercising enough. I know I should, but it's, you know, I just never really get myself. But in 90 days, I really want to have a regular workout routine. So, okay, how can we break it down into a habit? Well, you can first say, hmm, okay, maybe one hour exercise every three days. That sounds good. but then. Can you actually commit 
to do that even if you're having the most busy week when nothing is going according to your plans and there's just crisis after crisis and you're tired and there's no time for anything? Well, most of the people probably would give up in those circumstances. And the point of it is that you continue no matter what. So for example, my partner wanted to build her yoga practice. And what she found is that the biggest resistance for her to actually do yoga is to roll out a yoga mat. And this is it. It's an activity that takes five seconds. You just put the mat and you roll it out. So what she decided is that for those 90 days, she will track this action. It's just to roll the yoga mat. She doesn't need to do yoga. She just needs to roll the mat and stand on it. And what she found is that I'm, you know, I'm guessing the number, but like almost all of the days she actually did yoga. It was most of the time between 20 to 45 minutes. But on some days she did just five, but she still did it. And, and that was the biggest, the biggest insight behind it. If she would force herself to do one hour every day, it would be more likely for her to fail. Yeah. So basically in employing the methodology of tiny habits, and that's where you start. And, you know, this is the first step. And then you can scale it up, bring more habits, build routines. But that's, that's the next step when you have the basic consistency up and running. So it's kind of like the writer who says, hey, we're going to write a thousand words a day, but then breaks it down to, I'll just write 50 words this morning and that's it. Yeah. And that doesn't mean that, you know, 50 mm -hmm. words is your goal, you go ahead and write 1,000. Go ahead and write 2,000. But even if you write 50, it's already, it means that you tried, that you did the repetition. And those reps on the, on the hardest days are probably more valuable than the easy ones. This is where actually, you know, we're building our character and we're saying, no, I'm going to do this no matter what, because my goal is important to me. And I really want to achieve this thing that I want to achieve. So just to go back to something you brought up there a few minutes ago about burnout, how could like somebody who's really busy running their business or starting a business use journaling to recognize signs of burnout? Well, minimalist journaling system is, is one of the ways, but basically it all comes down to, to having a moment of self time and reflect on what's happening. And even if you don't keep a journal, you can simply go outside, leave everything and just go for a 10 minute walk just with yourself to think. And, you know, I find that usually lots of people don't even have this few minutes for themselves. You know, we have our phones. Okay. So there's always something happening, but just to have this moment of peace and clarity and mindfulness and reflection on what's going on in your life. And if you keep having it every day, things start to come up. It might take, you know, a moment to, to get into the habit of that. And of course, journaling is a great way to do that because you're writing. So you're making things even more tangible. Sometimes when you know we're just thinking, we can get lost in thoughts and, and kind of start thinking about not necessarily you know reflect on what's happening in our life, but just get lost in little distractions. But yeah, just this take time to observe what's happening in your life. And then tracking habits is one way or tracking certain symptoms, you know, if Let's say you might find things like, okay, maybe you're addicted to coffee and, and the coffee is actually what's bringing you anxiety and then the anxiety triggers certain behaviors that then spiral down and at the end we have a burnout. I know this is for me, it's one of my triggers. I don't really drink coffee very often, but in the past few few weeks leading to the burnout for a few reasons, I was drinking two or three cups a week, which is much more than I usually drink. And I could see that this, you know, brings more stress in my life, brings more anxiety. And, you know, that contributes to other things. And then, you know, I started eating a little bit more sugar. So I can see all those patterns. But basically, I've noticed those patterns because I was paying attention to what am I doing with my life on this very basic self-maintenance basis. As a, you know, if I think of my body as a vehicle, what am I feeding this vehicle? How am I maintaining this vehicle? What am I putting in? Do I do some regular cleanings and checks and all of that? So that's one way to use a journal. But you can just have a think about it or a conversation with someone like a coach or just a friend can be very helpful to bring the awareness to that. I'm also curious at what journals you recommend people read. You've, you've listed some resources on your site. Are there any popular journals that, that you've enjoyed reading? Uh, well, Benjamin Franklin is, is amazing. I mean, he's just such a structured person and, you know, achieved quite a lot. So it's quite impressive to see 
habit tracking that's connected. But yeah, for him, it's not really habits, it's virtues. You know, it's, it's quite impressive that he managed to, to build his life around very powerful principles that he wants to live his life by. And then he tracked how he's doing. Frida Kahlo is, is another very exciting persona. I mean, she, her art is, there's nothing quite like it. So looking through it, it's, it's a powerful experience. But to be fair, I found that anytime if I, if I can get a hold of, of somebody's journal, especially when it's slightly more visual than text, it always resonates a lot with me. But that's probably because my journal is also a combination of doodles, flowcharts, graphs, and everything like that. But I would say that probably everyone's journal would be interesting to read because there's even in you know a regular person's life, I'm sure there's quite some amazing insights that can be used for you know just learning about life and learning how to become a better person. Yeah, John Cheever's journals were, are some that I recommend. And finally, I have a feeling about what you're going to say, but do you have an early morning routine that is ideal for you? Yeah, <laughs> uh, this is, you know, I guess this kind of a very common, common topic. And this is something that evolves constantly. So, you know, what I might tell you today might change in a month or even faster because I'm constantly kind of experimenting. But some components are the same. It's pretty much the order of them or the length changes. But basically, I wake up, I, I go to the bathroom first, take care of the kind of physiological needs. And then I drink some water with lemon. And I journal and I start by answering a question I asked myself yesterday. And then I write down my dreams, if I remember them. And then I journal a bit more and then I meditate. After that, it's usually time for either exercise. Right now, I'm kind of, I changed that. And now I'm having breakfast first. I'm reading after breakfast. And then now I started going for walks after breakfast. And exercise kind of comes later in the day. But yeah, and after the walk, I'm ready to, to hit the work. So that's my morning routine. Mm, oh yeah, it's similar to mine. So, so, so Michal, where, where can people find you or information about the Minimalist Journaling System? So the best place to find the information about Minimalist Journaling System is to go to our website, journalsmarter.com. There is a starter kit there. So if anybody would like to give it a shot, there's all the instructions how to, how to start. And soon we're going to have a, a full-on course going very deep into all the principles behind it and the whole methodology and how you can scale it up to track ridiculous amount of data, still using 30 seconds and not getting lost in, in all of that and using it to find patterns and just make huge progress in your life. So yeah, Journal Smarter is the best place to, to have a look. Well, it was great to talk to you today. I enjoyed it very much. Thanks a lot for inviting me to your podcast. I really appreciate it. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this podcast episode. If you did, please leave a rating on the iTunes store. And if you want to accomplish more with your writing, please visit becomearitertoday.com forward slash join and I'll send you a free email course. Thanks for listening.